Okay, so in the next few lessons, we're going to be looking at factorization. Oops, let's try that again. We're going to be looking at factorization. Uh, in this video, we're going to be starting off with factorization, and we're going to be talking about finding a common factor. Um, now, uh, let's link this back to a previous lesson. Uh, you've learned about something called the distributive law previously. Uh, and the distributive law, it's questions like this. 3x plus 2, and you guys have been really good at taking this number and multiplying it by this and getting 3x, and taking this and multiplying by this and getting 3 times 2, which is 6. So that's the distributive law. Now, everything that we do here with the finding a common factor is going to be taking that 3x plus 6, seeing that it has a common factor of 3, so the 3 comes out the front, and there's going to be 3 times what equals 3x, x and 3 times what equals 6 positive 2 so basically we're taking the distributive law and we're reversing it we're going the other way now uh, I'm just going to jump straight into some examples and we're going to knock these out really quickly have a feeling you've probably seen these before in some way or another uh, so 3x plus 21 so you need to look at these two numbers 3x and positive 21 and ask yourself uh, what's the common factor here? Now, um, you, you might need to go through a little bit of work here, or you can see straight away, perhaps, that the common factor is 3. 3 goes into 3x, and 3 also goes into positive 21. So I take my common factor out the front, and then I ask myself the question, 3, goes in, uh, three times what makes 3x? It's x. And 3 times what makes positive 21, positive 7. Now you can always check your answer. You can always check your answer by re-expanding this. This is not something that you have to do. It's something that you can choose to do if you want to do well and you want to make sure you're getting the right answer. I'm going to check my answer. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 7 is 21. 3x plus 21. That's what I started with, so I'm probably right. Okay, next one. 7a minus 42. Now again, we're looking for a common factor here. The common factor between 7a and 40, and sorry, negative 42, would be 7. 7 goes into both of those. Now ask yourself the question: 7 times what makes 7a? It's a. And 7 times what makes negative 42? Uh, it's negative 6. You can see the difference between example 1 and example 2 is this negative. So again, if I wanted to, I can check my work. 7 times a, 7a, 7 times negative 6, negative 42. That's what I started with, so I must be right. Keep going here. You can see I'm flying through these. Um, what's next? Okay, so example 3, 4, 5, 6. Can I jump through these? y squared plus 4y. Now the difference here is that both of our things have a y. So the common factor here is actually y. And then we need to ask ourselves the question, y times what makes y squared? Now, y squared is just the same as y times y. So, y times y makes y squared. And then, y times what makes positive 4y? That's going to be 4. Now, again, I can check my work, make sure I'm right. y times y is y squared. y times 4 is 4y. So y squared plus 4y, that's what I started with, so I must have done that right. Continuing, uh, so obviously example 3, that changed a little bit because one of the letters was our uh, common factor. This one, 4ab plus 16a. Now you need to be really careful once we start getting into these more complicated ones uh, because there's a common factor, you can see the 4 and the 16, so there's a common factor of 4 but there's also a common factor of a. You can see there's an a in both of them. So the common factor here is 4a. Then we go through it the same as usual. 4a times what makes 4ab? It's going to be b. And 4a times what makes 16a? 4a times 4. Now with these more complicated ones, it's probably even more important that you're checking your work. 4a times b makes 4ab, and 4a times 4 
makes 16a. So you can see that I've gone from here, I've come back to here, so I must be right. Okay. More complicated. Oh, that one was more complicated because it had a common factor of 4a, a number and a letter. Let's look at this one. 3x minus 9x squared. Again, we can see it's got a common factor. The 3s are common factors. So that goes out the front. Also, it has an x here and an x squared here. So an x must be a common factor. Now, this is a bit weird. Ask yourself the question, 3x times what makes 3x? Some of you might be going, whoa, what's happening, what's happening? 3x times what makes 3x? 3x times 1 makes 3x. And then you need to ask yourself, 3x times what makes negative 9x squared? Okay, 3x times negative, because it making it, it's making a negative here, negative 3, because 3 times 3 makes 9. And then we need an x squared, so 3x times negative 3x. Now again, you can check your work, check your work. 3x times 1 makes 3x. 3x times negative 3x makes negative 9x squared. x times x makes x squared. So I've gone here, I've factorized it, I've done this. Now remember all of this checking, all this checking here, that's all optional stuff, but you can hopefully you're starting to see that it's a really clever way to make sure that you're getting the right answers. Okay, final one here. I'll just work directly underneath it. You can see 10 and 25. So it has a common factor here of 5. Now you can see an x here, an x squared, and you can see an x here. Uh, so that means that, oops, let's get rid of that bracket. You can see an x here and an x here. So that means it's got a common factor of x. You can see a y here and a y squared here. So it has a common factor of y. And then we go through our same process that we always go through. 5xy times what makes 10x squared y? That's going to be 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And then we can see that we've got an x squared here, but we've only got an x here. So to make 5x squared y, we're going to need to multiply that by x. And finally, um, we have a negative 25xy squared. I'm going to need a negative. 5 times negative 5 makes negative 25. We've got an x and a y, but we need y squared, so I'm going to need to multiply by a y. And of course, you can check that. Boom, 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 boom. You should come back to here, and it'll all make sense. Whew. Okay, I feel like I've worked really hard here. I feel like we've got six examples here getting more and more difficult as we go on. But as it goes with everything in maths, you need to practice this stuff to get better and better and better at it. Uh, also, this finding a common factor stuff is a very, very important skill. And as you'll find out in future videos, you'll need this to do more and more complicated maths as we go on. So make sure that you practice these a lot and make sure that you're always getting them right before you move on to the next stuff.